Today we'll discuss the annoying news of Games Workshop price increases, exactly what's going up, what's going up, how much is going up, and a few things behind the rise. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where we want to get the most out of our miniatures in game, and ideally we want to get the most cool miniatures on the table for the least money as possible. So earlier last week Games Workshop announced that they were going to be raising prices on numerous of their products, and that these price rises will be going ahead from the 1st of June. It happened on a Warhammer community post, and they have provided a list of 450 odd products that are going to be going up in price at around about the 3,000 or so that they say that they have on the web store. So it's certainly not a flat price rise across the board, but it is quite a lot of things, including some core units from many 40k factions. I think it is quite helpful that Games Workshop have put them all together in one place to give us some advance warning of exactly what is going up. Even if nobody is a fan of prices going up, I think it's a reasonably nice move to at least let us know what stuff is going up. So if anyone was thinking about buying something, then it gives people prior warning so they can actually make the purchase before the prices go up rather than just announcing it overnight. And if someone did particularly want a Land Raider Crusader for example, then all of a sudden they're paying £10 more for it. So to be fair to them, it is good to have a little bit of advance warning. I'll link the Warhammer community article down in the description below, and from there you can access the full list of their things that they say are going to be going up. As well as the Games Workshop's information, it seems that several sources on the internet already appear to have leaked the actual price increases that will be happening. I believe that the information is sent out to their various stores and stockists to give them a heads up prior to the rise, and that makes it very easy for people on the internet to find us. Two of the easiest sources that I found on the internet were Chapter Master Valrak and Spiky Bits. I don't exactly know where either of them got their information, but they do seem to perfectly correlate, and they are the same units that are listed on Games Workshop's website, so I strongly believe that both of these sources are legit. I'll also link to their review and video down in the description below. And of course, they both provide a little bit of discussion around the area as well. I thought perhaps the most useful thing that I could add would be to actually break down the units that are going up by faction and exactly how much they are going up in a more digestible format, because at the moment these just seem to be massive long lists of prices that aren't the most helpful to find things if you are looking for individual products. So we'll be going over each 40k faction later in the video. Obviously this is pretty bad news for us as consumers, and also likely for the game in general a bit. When Games Workshop raises prices, it'll likely be the difference between some people making purchases or not, or maybe even continuing with Warhammer 40k in general. So I suspect that every time they raise prices like this, the community will shrink by a little bit. I think it's particularly hard to swallow when they raise prices, as they already have a reputation of having pretty high prices for what you get in terms of plastic in general. Though the debate as to whether or not Warhammer is a more expensive hobby than other high-end hobbies is another one entirely, and probably something we can talk about at a different time. The fact remains though now, your money might go a little bit less far if you want some of these units that are going up. If we look at it from Games Workshop's point of view, I think it's not unreasonable that they will be raising prices every so often. Even if there were no other motive, then you do have to account for inflation, as if they keep things at the same price, then this will gradually eat into profits more and more each year, and it is a cumulative effect that can add up surprisingly quickly. They mentioned in the article that the majority of products that they have risen in price have not received price rises for years. Obviously they're also a company, and will certainly be wanting to maximise their profits, so I guess some financial people will be doing the equation between lost sales for people not wanting to buy anymore, versus the extra money that they get per sale. Again, as a business, they are unfortunately pretty much bound to be making the highest profits that they can, but I do kind of feel that any goodwill they lose in the short term could have long-term consequences by shrinking the community and having less players play their game, and therefore less customers. As to why it's happened now, I suspect that it probably was just a routine increase that they were planning before the virus situation, though it is perfectly possible that it could be partly in response to that, as they, like everyone else, is going through a bit of a rough period at the moment, and this could potentially be a way of them trying to recoup some of the massive losses that closing all of their stores will have caused them. They also might have timed it to coincide with the announcement of the 9th edition, basically hiding a price increase behind the hype that's building up for a new edition of 40k, which a lot more people will be more interested in at the moment, and will likely make people forget about the price increases just a little bit. Regardless of what you think about the price increases, and how annoyed you are at Games Workshop, the main changes for us are basically whether or not you're happy to buy at these increased prices, and until then if you really do want some of these units and we're planning on buying them regardless, it probably does make more sense to pick them up over the next week rather than buy it sometime over the next month when the price is going to be higher. 
Obviously, I wouldn't go out and make any purchases that you weren't planning to already. Warhammer's expensive regardless of whether it's the old price or the new price, so I would think long and hard as to whether or not you actually need or want any given kit. For me, it's not going to change me buying 40k, but it certainly makes buying any one of these units that are going up a little less palatable. As well as increasing in the manufacturer's recommended selling price, they are also increasing the trade price as well, which means that stores and discounters will have to buy these units at a little bit more expensive of a price. So I would expect to see proportionate rises in the prices among the discounters, whether that's Element Games, the one that I have a link to in the video description, or any others. I'd also like to mention that a lot of these make the start collecting boxes a lot more viable than before if you were thinking about buying certain units out of an army. In particular, the Astra Militarum and start collecting Orcs boxes are much better deals than they were before if you want those units. As the start collecting boxes have all remained the same prices, they already offered some reasonable discounts, and for certain ones, multiple elements of the box have gone up in price, such as for the Imperial Guard, the Commissar, Cadians, and Lehman Russ have all increased in price. The start collecting box, already arguably the best way to get these, has remained exactly the same, so it's proportionally a better deal than before. It's very similar for Orcs, where Pain Boys, Boys and Knobs have all gone up, and I'm glad that we haven't seen any start collecting box price rises. So in terms of the actual price changes, I have documented a fair few of them here, broken down from the various manifests that have been linked on the internet. I've focused just on 40k units and accessories that you might need for 40k, and I've listed the old and new UK prices and the old and new US dollar prices. The increases do vary pretty wildly, they're anything between 25 and about 25%, depending on the item in specific. So some of them have gone up by a lot, some of them really not by much. Without further ado, let's get into looking at some of the units. First of all, for the Space Marines, we've got increases on both their infantry and vehicles, including quite a lot of core units. A couple of characters have gone up, the Librarian and Phobos Captain by a couple of pounds each, and some of the core non-primaris choices, including Assault Squads, Tactical Squads, Devastator Squads, Scouts, Terminators, Vanguard and Stern Guard, and Command Squads have all gone up in price. I suspect that the main Space Marine infantry ranges are sort of treated as an individual unit from Games Workshop, and these guys are very much all not things that have been adjusted in particular recent years, as all of the most recent releases have been Primaris type stuff. In general, they've all gone up by about £2.50 or $4, but the Vanguard and Stern Guard veterans are hit with some of the biggest price increases, Vanguard's jumping £5.25 to 30 and Stern Guard's jumping £5 from 30 to 35 or $8 respectively. If we look over at the Space Marine motor pool now, including the bikes, both bikes and attack bikes, and land speeders and land speeder storms have both gone up by £2.50 to whatever their respective price was, although only a very small increase dollar-wise, for the land speeder, and the bike squad has remained the same in the USA. Dreadnoughts seem to have gone up pretty much across the board, and pretty much most of the dreadnoughts across the entire range are now at least £35, or $58 or $59. The Ironclad's taken a big jump of £5 to £35, the drop bod's gone up by £2.50 or $4, and both the Storm Raven and Land Raider Crusader slash Redeemer have gone up by really quite big price jumps of either £10 or $16. I must admit it's quite annoying to see big and fairly old kits such as the Crusader slash Redeemer going up by quite so much, as these guys used to be significantly cheaper. I'd argue that these two are probably some of the biggest price increases, as they're both large price increases and quite proportionally high compared with some of them. A bunch of the upgrade frames, including the Primaris ones, have gone up. I think this might be to standardise them in comparison to the other ones they released with the Space Marines. They're now £9 or $15 a piece. The Blood Angels have had their Sanguinary Priest go up, and pretty unfortunate increases on their unique units, including an extra £2.50 on their Dreadnoughts, and some of their core elite units in the Death Company and Sanguinary Guard have also seen major jumps, particularly so the Sanguinary Guard, who are now £30 or $48. The Dark Angels get off relatively lightly with just their Ravenwing Bikers going up, the Space Wolves see increases on their Iron Priest and Auric the Slayer, their Terminators going up to £32.50, much like the Standard Marines, their Wolf Pack taking a big jump up to £30 or $48, and both their Venerable Dreadnoughts and Thunder Wolves going up to £35 or $57. Death Watch don't have many units, but most of them are going up as well. Watchmasters are now £20 or $34, Veterans are up to £25, and the Corvus Black Star has taken a similar hike, but not quite as bad as the Storm Raven, up to £50 or $80. If we look at the rest of the Imperium, Grey Knights have seen increases for Voldus and their Terminators or Paladins, though at least in terms of pounds per points, the Paladins are still a reasonably decent deal. The Custodies and Sisters of Silence have just seen rises for Trajan Valoris and the Sisters of Silence box themselves. 
The Astra Militarum have seen quite a few increases though, including their standard issue Commissar, who's £17.50 now, or $29. I'd very much be tempted to get him as part of the start collecting rather than on his own. The Tech Priests are up a bit, the Cadian Infantry and Command Squads are up a bit as well. Again, in particular, that Cadian Infantry Squad is incredibly long-serving, and it's a bit annoying to see that go up in price, as it's one of Games Workshop's oldest kits now. Valkyries similar to the Corvus Blackstar are up to £50, or US dollars Chimeras are up to 30 Scions or Scion Command Squads are up to £25 or $38. Again, as you get two of them in the start collecting box, then that set is now pretty much a no-brainer for them. And the Lehman Russ and Lehman Russ Demolisher have gone up £2.50 or $4. The Admech are seeing rises on their Tech Priest Dominus and Rangers and Vanguard, each of £2.50 or $4. Though interestingly enough, the Tech Priest Dominus appears to be remaining the same in the USA at $36. And their Infiltrators or Rust Stalkers are going up a bit too. Finally, for the Imperium, all the Assassins have gone up from £20 to £22.50, or up to $36. US dollars. I think there seems to be a bit of a theme amongst characters, to be honest. If we look at the Forces of Chaos now, the Chaos Space Marines see rises for their Demon Prince, Khan the Betrayer and Harkon World Claimer, two of their more recent units. And again, some old kits in the Noise Marines and Corn Berserkers, the Corn Berserkers in particular taking a big jump from £25 to $30, or $40 to $48, again annoying as they're such an old kit. Possessed, Raptors and Bikers are all up from £22 to £25, and they're either $38 in the US, although the Bikers are remaining at 40 It is interesting the weird slight pricing disparities between the UK and the US. Spawn have gone up a little bit for £27.50 for two of them, same with the Chaos Rhino, and the Noctilith Crown Fortifications gone up from 30 to 35 or 50 to 58 Unfortunately, the Thousand Sons Rubrique have gone up to 35 and both of the Zangor units are taking a jump as well. The Enlightened being a bit more of a painful jump, going from 25 to 30 or again 40 to 48 dollars. For the Demons, a lot of their core units have gone up. The Demon Prince again, the Sloppy Bile Piper, Small Pot Scrivener, and the Mask of Slanesh all have jumped to 20 pounds or 34 dollars. Karanek and Skull Taker for the Corn Demons have gone to 36 dollars or 22 pound 50. Flamers and Nurglings are up 2 pound 50. Demonettes, Plague Bearers, and Bloodletters are likewise. And blue and pink horrors are also up £2.50, though strangely they cost more than their companions already. The Burning Chariot and Beast of Nurgle have each jumped to £27.50 or $44, and the Feculent Narmor is up £25 or $40. The Eldar haven't escaped either, with Farseers, Farseer Skyrunners and Eldrad Ulthran up, Guardians and Dark Reapers out of their infantry, and out of their vehicles War Walkers, Wraith Fighters and Wave Serpents have all taken a jump, the Wraith Fighters and Wave Serpents both jumping £5, or 5 and $8 respectively. The Inari Triumvirate of Yenid has gone up to £50, or $80. The Drukhari have seen increases for their Archon up to $29, or £17.50. And their Warriors, Witches and Venoms are all £22.50 now, or $36. That's definitely a much smaller increase on the US side there. Scourges are up to £20 from £17.50, and Raiders are up to £30, so that's another decent sized jump. I feel like they have a price bracket from £25 to £30, and that seems to be a particularly painful jump to make, as it's a bit higher than average on a 20% increase. The Harlequins have seen their Death Jesters and Shadow Seers go up a bit, and same with their Skyweaver jet bikes. Orcs have taken some hits as well, just pain boys out of their HQ. The boys are up for their core troops to £22.50 or $36. Gretchen take a very little price height to £12.50, though remaining the same in the US. Looters, Knobs and Storm Boys all up to £20 or $34, and Trucks and War Bikers going up to £27.50. Finally for them, the Mech Boy Workshop has increased to £30 or $48. For the Necron side, their Overlord and Catacomb Command Barges have gone up a little bit, and their Canoptic Spider, Necron Warriors and Necron Immortals going up from £22.50 to £25, and the Warriors a little bit more than the others on the US side, jumping to $40. I'm not sure how many people they're expecting to buy the old style Necron Warriors, particularly as we've just seen all the new ones teased for 9th edition. They have Triarch Praetorians increasing to 30 quid as well, same for Tomb Blades, and Doom Sires taking a £5 increase to £37.50. Finally, for 40k armies, we have Tau and Tyranids. Tau see hits on their Carda Fireblade, Pathfinders, Stealth Suits, Piranha, Devilfish, and Tidewall Shield Line fortification. I think that the Devilfish is the worst hit overall, taking that 25 to 30 pound jump. For the Tyranids, Gene Stealers, Gargoyles, and Hormigaunts all going up £2.50, and the Trigon or Morlock now being 50 quid or 80 dollars. 
On the gene stealer court side, they've seen the Jackal Alphas and Neophyte hybrids increase, and the Tectonic Frag Drill dropping from 35 to 40 pounds. I couldn't find the price for the USA, unfortunately. In addition to this, they've also increased on quite a few of the accessories for 40k. As far as I can tell, every faction's data cards are going to £12 or $18, and the generic tactical objective set going to £10 or $15. As well as this, they've increased on the objective markers, Sistel brushes and sprays, plastic glues, water pots, cutters, drills, sticks, knives, paint racks, paint boxes, paint racks, hobby boxes, and paint pot holders pretty much most of the carry cases, and some of the terrain such as Munitorum containers, Sector Mechalicus things, Sector Imperialis ruins, Riser ruins, the Battle Sanctum, which I believe is also available to the Sisters of Battle, and some terrain for the Adeptus Titanicus and Aeronautica Imperialis units, if you know them. Apologies for not listing every single price increase across these lots, I think I just sort of ran out of energy a bit towards the end. So I hope I've helped at least clarify what the Games Workshop price rises mean a little bit, and help to give a little bit of prior warning if you were just about to pick up any of these kits. Basically you want to do it before June the 1st, not after June the 1st, if you want to be paying a little bit less. Though I wouldn't say to go out and make any purchases that you weren't going to already, as while the price increases are some hefty wax on some of them, I'm not sure that any of them are big enough to really say, yes this is completely viable to buy beforehand, and completely beyond your reach afterwards. I know that those increases sounded like a lot, but bear in mind it is just a sixth of Games Workshop's range, and for every unit that I listed in some armies, many many units are going untouched. Don't get me wrong though, there are plenty of core units affected by this, and this will definitely cost hobbyists a bit more. So overall, not great news, but I think it's best to be as informed as we can about what's going to happen, as we're not going to be able to change it, and you just need to decide whether or not you still want to be making the same purchases after these rises have taken it into effect. So thanks very much for listening to an Auspex Tactics video. If you'd like to see any other similar content, we do regular buying and selling 40k type videos fairly regularly here. So feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more. And if you'd like to help support the channel, I'd just like to mention a couple of the affiliate links that I have down in the description below. As I mentioned earlier, Element Games is one of the distributors in the UK that sells Warhammer at a discount. So it's one of the more economical ways to buy Warhammer if you are looking to save a bit of money. If you click the link in the description below before making a purchase, then a little bit of money goes towards Auspex Tactics without costing you any more. So if you were about to buy anything in the near future, that can be one way to help support the channel. There's also a similar Amazon link for people in the USA and Canada. I'm afraid it doesn't typically offer the same sort of discounts, but you can find most 40k things for sale there. And of course they generally have good standards of customer service and returns and things. So if you'd like to support the channel there at all, then clicking that link before making any Amazon purchases, whether it's models or something entirely different, also a tiny bit goes to support the channel. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.